Welcome to the final act of the tutorial. So yeah, this is going to be where things start to get a little bit insane. Especially near the end of this act. Um, the main thing is going to be fighting Burns. The final phase of Burns is uh, extremely difficult. For some reason, it took me around 5 hours, 58 minutes to, to beat that final checkpoint. Which is really um, probably due to my stubbornness of, of using the machine gun for... Um, shooting at Burns, which was probably a bad idea. Once I switched to the anti-armor pistol, it wasn't much longer before I finally did beat him. And I also, uh, my good friend the Ripper999 just completed this game again, and he ended up using the LFE weapon to um, interrupt Burns when he rushes in. So after watching his video, I decided to try that, and that worked much more consistently for me than the shotgun. So um, I'll detail all that uh, when, when I show that part of the video. For this part, I like to throw a stun grenade in this room. I slide to this room real fast, throw a stun grenade in here, and then I use the anti-armor pistol to just clean up and, and shoot some of the guys down. It's hard to throw a hand grenade in here and get good results because of the table being in the way, and um, a lot of the enemies are not really that visible in there because of the table. So I like to just um, peek around that corner and pop them off with the anti-armor pistol after stunning them all. A few headshots will wipe them all out. Then you can get on, once all the enemies are cleared in that room, you can get on a turret and you have a free kill right here. This is very easy. You just shoot at this thing. You're not really in any danger once you've cleared out those enemies. Now, some enemies may try to come in, so just be aware of that. But it's extremely easy. I use uh, a few rockets to, to finish them off because the turret ran out of bullets. But um, that's what's good about having a rocket launcher on hand as one of your primary weapons. That's why I recommend the, uh, the loadout I have. Though we're going to be dropping the laser cannon soon because it becomes completely useless once burn ap burns uh, appears. It's pretty much useless for that. So now you have a few Romanovs and some enemies. You have a lot of cover here that you can move around between. So um, I believe you get a checkpoint after the buzzard anyway. So you'll get your rockets back if you die. So, you know, just waste up all your rockets on one of the Romanovs. It, it'll take it out pretty much. You can finish it off with a few uh, pistol shots to finish it off. And there may be a few scraggler enemies, but they're easy to take out. I mean, you can stay really far back and just uh, snipe them out. So it's not a problem. Now, for the final boss, I've mentioned already in previous um, episodes of the tutorial that um, the final boss is by far the hardest thing in the game. For some reason, the final boss, the first checkpoint of the final boss, because the the second checkpoint is very easy, but the first checkpoint only took me about three hours and thirty three minutes to beat on the bogey this time. And Burns took me like six hours. But I still consider the bogeys to be much, much harder. I was just, for whatever reason, I was much better at managing the, the bogeys this time around. And I used a very risky method that I used nine years ago, and I was able to pull it off. Which I'll explain it, but I've never seen it demonstrated before. So while it's not a great method to use in a tutorial, because it's not the easiest thing to do, obviously, um, it at least shows something different that hasn't been shown before. I haven't seen videos of it before, so... I think the method will be interesting. I, I, I actually found out about the method a long time ago. Um, like nine years ago in a, in a forum, I read about it, but I had never seen anybody demonstrate it. And I don't know if anyone's ever really done that method for the entire fight as the, as the only real means of attack. So it's basically a combo that I'll explain later. It'll, you'll, you'll see it when I do it. But um, I'll try to explain best I can. It's going to be hard because there's so much going on in that bogey fight. And there's really, there's no easy way around it. It's brutal no matter how, how you play it. I like the method I use because it's a quicker way to take out the bogey, but it comes with a lot of risks because you don't have armor most of the time. Since you use melee attacks, you strip your armor and your movement is slowed down. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, not, it's definitely not a safe way to play. So after you clear out these guys, which you can do from a distance, there's really not much to explain there. You're going to go up to this panel, and I believe you get a checkpoint right here. So now that you got the checkpoint, you're going to defuse one of the bombs. The first one here, just defuse it or, uh, or place it. And now there's going to be a bias enemy that appears on the end of this corridor. You don't have to fight it at all, so I'll show you how to kill it without fighting it. Set this bomb immediately. Now go back to the crate and just wait behind the crate for the... Um, that's edited there because that was a checkpoint. Now go behind the crate. Wait for this bias to get to about the middle of the room where the bomb is. 
And as soon as he gets around that area, you're going to stun grenade him. And you have to leave very quickly. So now slide around this corner. And you want to do it very fast. And hit X immediately so you get right into that panel. And then jump into this room and now detonate the bomb. As soon as your feet touch that room, detonate the bomb. If you're not in that room, you'll die from the blast. But as soon as your feet go in that room, you can detonate it by um, hitting LS and RS. You know, both analog uh, buttons. And you'll, you'll kill the bias as well. So you don't have to fight it. Otherwise, it would be a close area to fight the bias. And that could definitely be a pain in the ass. So yeah, very easy turret section here. You can kind of just fuck around and just clean out these guys. There's really no risk. It's just more of a fun little thing. So yeah, I'll talk more about... I'll try to explain more of the bogey strategies in the meantime because, like I said, I'm not going to have time to explain all that during the fight. It's only a two-minute fight for me since I do a very fast but high-risk method. So yeah, for the bogeys, it's more. It's mostly about awareness on the radar. Um... And, and, you know, being pretty familiar with their attacks and how to dodge it, obviously. But you don't ever want them to get behind you or, or to your side. You really have to watch the radar. I was able to do it mostly this time just by watching them, but I still use the radar as a reference. When I wasn't sure where they were, I would take a quick look at the radar, which is in your top right corner. And they show up as red dots. So you can see where they are in relation to you. And it helps when they're not always visible because they fly really high in the air sometimes and you cannot see them, so... It's hard to keep track of both of them. But yeah, nine years ago when I did the bogeys, I believe a rough estimate, it probably took me somewhere like 10 to 20 hours to beat that one checkpoint. Now, I might be way off with that estimate, but that's what it felt like. I didn't, I didn't record back then, so I don't really know how long it took, but it took days. And this time I beat it in three and a half hours. So I think, you know, I had become a much better player since then. But this time around, you know, I also knew what to expect. I knew that this was going to be, you know, potentially, I thought it was going to be much harder than it was for me this time. But um, I managed it relatively easily. I almost beat it within my first hour and six minutes. I almost defeated the bogey. So I was surprised by that. I, I thought that I didn't think I was going to get anywhere close for a long time. But I think I was less stubborn this time. I actually used the shotgun to shoot down the satellites that um, overheat your, your suit, which I wouldn't have done in the past. I was very stubborn in the past and would just grind the method until I got through kind of mindlessly. So I think, you know, I've become a much more adaptable player and just better. So that's helped a lot. So um, I, I expect that from, you know, most players, a majority of players, this, these, these bogeys are going to probably be a complete brick wall and prevent most people from finishing the game. Because you could see that on the leaderboards back then where there was only like 80 or 90 people on the leaderboard that completed the, the final act. Whereas before that you had thousands of people who got to the bogeys, but then it was narrowed down to about 90. So um, it's one of those parts that really separates who's going to beat the game. So don't be frustrated if it seems impossible. Just It takes a long time to get into the, uh, the flow with it. Now we fought Crystal Viper before, so this is not a new fight. So there won't be anything new to explain. Now, I played very aggressively using the shotgun, rockets, and stun grenades, as you can see. Most of his attacks are very easy to dodge. If you see him running towards you, get ready to mash X, because you can counter that move and do some damage to him as well. Sometimes I will actually um, I will mash X if he's far away from me, just so that if he does appear from out of the ground, I'll already be mashing X and countering his move. So you can do that... Um, preemptively as well just to be safe but when he does that move where he shoots um shit out everywhere you can kind of just strafe around him and shoot at him when you damage him enough sometimes he will go in a stunned state where you can do extra damage like that so take advantage of it i was able to take him out very fast just being very aggressive with you know shotgun grenades stun grenades and um, rocket launcher and, and the melee attacks you know, if you set all that up well, you can kind of chain it all together, and he doesn't have a chance to do much. That fight probably took me around 30 minutes. It, it wasn't as quick and painless as it looks here, but um, it, it's relatively easy, you know, for what this game has to offer. Uh, the game ended up taking me about 25 hours and 23 minutes for the whole game on Godhard. I started on Godhard using a cheat code to unlock Godhard. So if you want to consider that cheating, you can. But um, 
I didn't want to play through normal again. I've already beaten this game on, you know, previous um, Xbox 360. I beat it, and I beat normal God Hard. I've gone through the game a few times on the lower settings. So for this version, I went straight to God Hard, and um, I had to learn the hard way because, of course, I forgot how to play the game nine years later, so I had to learn everything again, but it didn't take me too long to get back into it. So now this guy's a pain in the ass, Robert Burns. He has multiple checkpoints and phases. So <clears throat> the thing with him is the main focus is really taking out the Marines that are, that are with him. They're going to spawn in very sneaky ways as you move up to try to kill you. So once you know their spawns, you'll be prepared for that. So yeah, take out the first batch of Marines. And then you can hang back here and unleash some of your rockets and shit on, on him just to get some damage if you can lock them on. Damaging him is not really that important because once he gets to a low amount of damage, the door's open and he goes out to that back area. And that's all you really need to get him to do for this part is go out to the back. So once he's damaged enough, he's going to go out all the way to the back where that lift is. What the game wants you to do is run out there and follow him to the lift. But if you do that, you'll get annihilated. So what you want to do... I like using the laser cannon still up until this point to take out the Marines. I find it pretty useful for taking them out. It is risky, though, because it drains your armor, of course. And you may be waiting around a lot for it to charge again, since you can't use it, obviously, when your, your armor's not full, fully charged. So it can be tedious. You may want to use a machine gun or something, like boost machine gun or something else. But you get the idea. You, just, you want to use long-ranged attacks. And when the Marines get close, switch to your shotgun and just pop them off. Most of them are not going to get through that doorway, though. You're going to be able to kill most of them before they can get through. The thing you need to be careful about for this checkpoint is as you move forward, um, enemies are just going to pop down out of the ceiling, basically. So you'll see what I mean. See? Or not out of the ceiling, but they kind of just come out of nowhere. So just there's two of them that spawn up as soon as you move. So take these two guys out. And eventually you can move into this room, but you want to clear these assholes out first. And once you move a little farther into this room, be aware that the door is going to close behind you. So you don't want to get too close to the Marines until you've cleared out most of them. Because then you're going to get locked in with like six Marines or whatever it is. And that's going to be a freak show. So, you know, try to avoid that. I mean, you could probably use grenades and stuff to, to deal with them, but it's a dangerous situation. Now, there's some asshole back here. I think it might be a sniper or something. Or a guy basically will kill you in one shot, it seems. So if you see any Marines, see that Marine really far back? I think there may be one that's really far in the back. I'm not sure if I, if I took them out yet. Just make sure you clear them out. Look for them because if you see any heads in the background, pop them off because some of them will one-shot kill you. That's why I'm playing this so safely because I was getting one-shot killed in this area, which is very annoying. It's just a tedious part. But if you take your time, it's not hard. It's just you just have to take your time and take out all these guys. You don't want to push forward too much at any one time. You know, you get too aggressive and you'll get you'll get uh, surrounded and killed. But once you've taken out all the Marines, you can um, kind of approach cover to cover and safely get to that lift. You still got to be careful with Burns shooting at you, but it's very easy to get past him once the Marines are dead. I did edit out a really, really long sequence of me firing at Burns with the laser cannon for many, many minutes. It's like it's it's at like around the final checkpoint. I edited it out because it's completely useless to show. I mean, there's no uh, there's no benefit to what I did because I I ended up dying anyway, and I had to fight Burns with his health, uh, you know, some of his health replenished at the checkpoint, and all the Marines being alive again, and I was trapped in the room. Most people are going to end up trapped in the room with Burns and six Marines in a small room, and it can be a nightmare to deal with, but I do have a strategy. It's not going to be easy. Like I said, it took me near six hours for that final checkpoint. But I do have a strategy. You know, you just have to grind it out. Eventually, you should break through with, with the strategy I used. But I have nothing to offer to make burns or the bogeys especially um, manageable or easy fights. I really can't offer that much um, in a tutorial with that, you know. I don't have any, any, um, any shortcuts I mean, my method does high damage, but it's also extremely dangerous on the bogey, so it's a trade-off. Not everyone is going gonna to be comfortable with that because you'll die much faster with low armor. So, um, 
even Rang, who I talked to, um, one of the top players of the game, um, said that you know the method I use is really not a uh, a good method. I mean, it's it's not a viable method or a safe method. You know, it's it's really really dangerous. So I mean, you know, it's not something that most players are using at all because it's it's really it's it's um it's a weird way to do the fight. It's a little strange. You know, I always have a weird play style. So. But I mean, I, I think I'd rather show my own technique than than show, than try to play it the way that everybody else is doing it. So I figured I would just grind it out and do my old technique again, and that old technique fit my play style really good. So I think it was a lot easier for me to do my old strategy than to try to do someone else's. You know, I was never very good at fighting the bogeys with the shotgun. Maybe I need more practice with that. I've seen the shotgun really, really destroy the bogeys, but um, I just didn't practice that enough. I, I pretty much went straight to my my old method. So. Um, if I put more time in, I probably could have got some good extra damage with the shotgun and, and made it easier, but just never did that. For this part, you're basically just going to be take cover on these walls as the lift moves. Try not to be vulnerable and just try to try to take out the Marines first because they're the ones who are going to, you know, be doing all the extra damage to you. But yeah, sometimes, you know, these tutorials are limited. Um, because it's just going to come down to to skill and some luck, but a lot of skill with the uh, with the bogeys. I mean, there's really no way to just uh, get through on luck or some kind of cheap strategy. This is really just my playthrough, my second playthrough of God Hard mode, and me just adding commentary and trying to break everything down that I did. You know, I never really did things differently for the sake of a tutorial. Which is, you know, normally the case with my playthroughs. So yeah, once you get rid of the Marines, and I think once Burns' health is down to a certain point, you'll go into the next checkpoint here. So for this checkpoint, it's going to be similar. You're going to want to take out the Marines in this room. First, there's going to be like, uh, I believe, two of them initially. Or th yeah, two of them and Burns. So you want to take out the two Marines first. If you still have the laser cannon, you can use it. You just have to wait a long time for it to recharge. But I'll be dumping the laser cannon once I get into the final room. Which is the main checkpoint for Burns. The final checkpoint for Burns. I call it the main one because that was the one that I spent six hours on, basically. So yeah, as you move forward a little bit, more Marines do pop in. So don't go all the way down after you kill the first two Marines. Just move forward a little bit trigger the spawn, and then kill them again. Because you can do so pretty safely from behind this barrier. So now, move down again. I believe there's going to be two more Marines that spawn when you get closer to that crate. Um, maybe not. Probably already killed them. Those were probably the two that I was thinking of. So what you're going to do here is don't rush in when Burns is, 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 is close to you. you know, just leave him alone. Hit him with a few rockets if you want to move him back. I think if you damage him, he may, he may go away. I think he leaves and goes to the back of the room anyway, but you may have to damage him a certain amount to open that final back door. I think that's what I just did. Yeah, I think by damaging, I got him to open that back door and leave. So once you've damaged him enough and he leaves, be very careful in here because Marines are going to just pop out of the pillar, see? Four of them just pop out, and that can easily kill you. So have your grenades ready, or if you have any rockets, use those. Use your stun grenades, regular grenades. You know, have all that shit ready. And if you need to, pop the remaining ones off with the shotgun. You know, it's, it's easy when you know what to expect. You just got to be ready for that or you'll get killed. Now for this part, you can clear out all the Marines before entering the room with Burns. But I edited that out because I did that and I ended up dying in the room anyway with Burns. Even when Burns was alone because I didn't know how to fight Burns well enough at that point. So, um, But if you are familiar with the game, then you can take the Marines out first. So what I just did here was very quick, so let me explain. I took out all six Marines with three hand grenades. So rewind it and watch it. Watch where I throw the three hand grenades. I threw them out very rapidly in three different positions. Now by doing that, there's a chance that I'll kill all the, the Marines by just the three hand grenades. Because I don't want to use any of my rockets on the, on the Marines. The only way I'll hit a Marine with a rocket is if the Marine is close to burns. And I had some Marines that survived my initial grenade barrage. So the three grenades is, is, is intended to take out all the Marines. If I don't take 
all of them out, or if there's more than two of them left, I, I always restart the checkpoint. So I just keep doing it until I get um, all the Marines. And then what I do is I stay in this area. Now, if the hand gets on you, it's not really dangerous. You can actually regenerate your health while this struggle's going on. Just rotate your animals. I, I didn't really care about dodging the hand too much because it gave me time to heal. And, like, when he gets close, when he tries to rush in around this corner, use the LFE to interrupt him, and it'll knock him back, and then he'll usually just leave after you do that. So, th so that's why I have the LFE for this fight. You can get all the weapons you want in this room by grabbing them and committing suicide. But just use the LFE when he comes around that corner. That's the only time I use it. It doesn't really do damage on him. So be aware of his positioning and use the anti-armor pistol to get headshots in whenever you can. Do not shoot at his body. Just go for headshots. That's going to do the most damage. And then I finish him off with a melee attack. But you can see, like, I dodge most of his stuff by just staying behind that, that, um, that counter. And I, I, pop, I pop up to shoot him in the head whenever I have an opening. Or when he drinks, you can get a few headshots and he drinks his, his uh, liquor or whatever it is. And when he comes around that corner, just use the LFE to interrupt him. And if you keep doing that, he'll just stay in that pattern. And it'll be very predictable. You can also interrupt him with the shotgun, but it's trickier, to, it's trickier to knock him back with that. It doesn't always go through. But that's the basic strategy. And of course, to get the weapons you want, there is crates in that room. You just got to use a stun grenade and slide to the crate and just keep trying to grab the weapons and dying. And eventually when you die, you'll respawn with whatever weapon you last grabbed. So... Just look at the loadout I had and, and mimic my loadout for that fight. Anti-armor pistol, LFE, and rocket launcher. Now for this, this is the hardest fight in the game. And this should have took me the longest, but this one only took three and a half hours this time. So let me try to explain this again. Throw out a stun grenade. Slide to the pink bogey. Trigger the melee attack, sliding melee. Lock on while in midair. When you hear the beep of the lock on, immediately fire the rocket. That's the combo. You're going to repeat that multiple times to beat the, um, maybe six times, depending. But whenever you hear aim carefully, the blue bogey is going to send out these drones that will overheat your suit, which is really bad for this strategy because you have to wait longer to heal before you can use your melee. So you want to shotgun those, those drones. As soon as they pop out, if you shoot them fast enough, you can blind fire and shoot two drones with one shot and kill them immediately as soon as they come out. If you wait a little bit longer, you have to shoot both drones um, individually with the shotgun. And you can do it with blind fire. You know, you still aim, but you're using the right trigger hip fire with the shotgun to take out those drones. If you do that, you will prevent your suit from overheating. So aside from that, you're going to be grabbing rockets and stun grenades in the arena with, as you run out by sliding over them and holding RB as you're sliding over so that the command is buffered and you just grab it. You're not going to stand there and grab anything or you'll probably die. You want to do it as you're either rolling or sliding. You want to have that RB held down so that you grab immediately, grab what you're, you're, you're rolling after. And, of course, you're going to have to know where everything's located. There's, e there's nine EMPs for this fight, stun grenades. So you have three in your inventory, and then there's six more on the field. And there's also another rocket pickup. So you're going to have six rockets in total to use for this strategy. Now, if you trigger the sliding melee attack just a little bit early you'll sometimes get double melee damage. At least that's how I think it's done. I found this glitch many years ago. It's rare that I get it, but I try to do the melee attack a little bit early. And um, sometimes I get double damage. But yeah, this is a tough one to explain because you really need to use the radar. You have to use those walls, but those, the cover does go down a lot. Where, you know, you just have an open field. And the best thing you can do then is try to just hold down the roll button and roll through and use your invincibility frames from the roll and hope you don't get hit. But you mostly want to be behind barriers and walls or moving the grab shit. But you got to do it very safely. It's very hard to, uh, to pull off. It takes a lot of awareness, and you really can't. That's not something you can teach in a tutorial. It's going to take, you know, don't, don't be concerned if it takes you many hours. Like I said, this fight, that first checkpoint took me, I don't know, 10 to 20 hours maybe uh, nine years ago. It's just a guess. This time only three and a half hours. But, you know, I've improved a lot since then. So um, now you have just a single bogey, which it took me about 15 minutes to beat this. It's a little tricky, but after, you, after what you just beat, this is not going to be a challenge at all. The bogey moves much faster. Um, and, and you want to use your stun grenades, and you can still do the same combo that, I'm, that I've been doing. The, the stun grenade, slide into a melee, and then use your rocket while in midair. Now when you do those rockets, you want to fire the rocket as soon as you hear that lock-on beep. If you do it a little bit too late or a little bit too early, the rocket will not connect. It is very precise. 
But it's it's easy enough to do once you've done that combo so many times from dying. I actually restart the checkpoint a lot on that fight when I if I don't land both the rocket and the melee attack combo on my first try. I will just reset immediately. Luckily on the Xbox One Series X, the uh, the load times are only about three seconds, so reloading is fast on that. It helps. But um, the reason I said to target the pink bogey first in the previous fight is because the pink bogey is the sniper bogey, and uh, for whatever reason, I was able to get it down on the ground more. And um, But try, you know, if that's not working for you, try the purple bogey, because the pink bogey does perch up on the ledges more often than the purple one. So sometimes you can't drop him from the air, because he, you know, if you stun him, he'll just be up on his ledge and he won't come down. You want um, access to the bogey to where it's flying around a lot, so you can use the sun grenade to knock it out of the air and then do your combo that I mentioned. So, yeah, hopefully that explains it. If you need any clarification, just let me know. But you have a higher boost meter in this fight, so this is going to be an easier version of what we just did. So not much to exp- no reason to really explain that again. It does move a lot faster, so you have to do your stun grenades a little earlier. But, um, yeah, probably not much else to explain about the bogeys. It's really going to take a lot of, uh, a lot of fucking attempts, man. It's, it's brutal. I mean, when I played it, it was one of the hardest parts I ever played in a game, by far. And I've, I, I had done a lot of extreme modes back then, and, you know, 40 million points in the Ninja Gaiden Black mission mode. I had done a lot of extreme shit with games, but, um, you know, at that point. But this was really, um, you know, up there is one of the hardest parts I've ever beaten. And um, now it's harder to say, because like I said, I beat it a lot faster than I expected. But yeah, after this is done, you're just going to headshot this guy, and then you've beaten the game. There is some credit sequence where you shoot the names of the developers, but um, you know you don't even have to participate in that. So yeah, thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any questions. If you want any more clarification, I tried to go in as much detail as I could with the uh, with the fights. It's hard to cover it in the uh, the running time of the tutorial, but I think I you know covered most of it. It's, it's mostly just going to be a lot of practice and frustration, and you know constant deaths. So just be ready for that. Like I said, it, it's um, when I got to it, I took two months off from the entire game when I got to the bogeys because it was just so fucking hard. I felt like I hit a brick wall back then. But, you know, with time and, and persistence, you, you can learn it. There are people who actually listen to the, the vocal cues because the bogeys will give off certain vocal cues. They say certain phrases before their attacks. I actually didn't memorize that shit. I probably should have. The only one I'm familiar with is when he says, aim carefully, he's going to send out those satellite probes that overheat your suit. And if you allow those to linger around and overheat your suit, um, you're going to have to wait a long time for your meter to refill so you can do your melee attack again, um, which I, which is essential for the combo I use. I need to have my meter, my, my boost meter full to be able to do my melee attacks, to, to do those combos. Otherwise, I'm just waiting around, which is very, very dangerous in that fight. So use the shotgun to take out those satellites. But aside from that, I just looked at what was on screen and I was able just to negotiate everything by just watching where all the shots were going and staying behind the barriers and constantly moving. And, you know, using that radar is, is huge too, like to, to have an awareness of where the enemies are when, when you don't see them because it's easy to lose track. Thanks for watching.